You know that time when you do a recording and you understand and you figure out at halfway point, I mean, in the final point of the chapter that your recording apparatus has decided to take you out of focus, thus ruining an entire video, an entire 30 minutes word of video that forces you to start all over again. My dear friends, my dear viewers, this is this week's chapter of One Piece 978 of its name, introducing the Toby Ropo. So yes, I've gone through this once. I'm such a noob, really. I'll solve this in in the meantime. Not in the meantime, but I I will try to solve this in the next in the next few months or weeks, or whatever the case is. We'll see. So the chapter begins with the cover story as well. Meh. And again, after we discovered Lola that it was Lola, and <coughs> the fact that she's so nonchalantly and preoccupied and that she was allowed to be captured by the marines uh, I mean the, the whole theory of her being married to Lucky Roo of the, the red-haired pirates kind of fell a bit to the ground because you know what would the red-haired pirates be doing in in Dressrosa if that's the case Unless she decided to go there on a honeymoon with him. Who knows? But the fact that she decided to kiss uh, uh, Goaty in that way after he saved her, it leads me to believe that there's no way that she could be married to, to Lakiro. First things first, if she was, I doubted that whoever was protecting her from the red-haired pirates wasn't gonna be able to deal with with the puny marines. So let's move forward. We see the polar tang submerging into the ocean to lead the remaining scabbards all the way to the back end of Onikishima. We see an interaction between Sashi and the, and, the, and the Kiku, Kaomatsu and Shuradoji them looking out the window, seeing the ocean from below and Raizo just like smiling to them like I've been there dear friends, I've been there, enjoy, enjoy we don't see Inuarashi on this scene which is really interesting but he has to be there, he's the only one missing from this group and we don't know if Shinobu went with, um, with Law or not I'm not sure, but anyway one thing that worries me in this scene is Law's face. Law's face is a little bit... I don't know, this is a ball that has been kicked about since Punk Hazard and since the beginning of their alliance. That Law might not be all that in the alliance as we think. Surely he has been playing his cards very well. Because it was of his interest. But this face right here, the, the lines over his eyes indicate that there's something going on with it and and I can't help but think that it is not a good thing. We see the ships moving in the mount, the mouth of the mountain of the entrance to Onigashima. We see some words of encouragement from from either Kinemon or, the, or Denjiro, we don't know. Some banter between them, and after a bit, we see it, Onigashima in its full frontal glory. This, poof, this is an image. When I first saw this on the, on the first translations, poof, this was an image, and I cannot wait to see this animated because I can already imagine all the colors we'll see here. Uh, the anime. Whatever, whatever shit we give the anime now, in terms of color and just visual representation of characters, locales, the anime has been doing a pretty good job. So, 
kudos to them for that and I cannot wait to see Onigashima in the anime. Then something that really set me aback was the fact that after they disembark they just sink the ships. Like I know this was done for you know the badass factor oh you know we're so confident we're gonna die we don't need for where we're going we don't need ships kind of like that kind of like back to the future moment there for where we're going we don't need ships but uh, no because I mean are they really all expecting to die is this really something we should be worrying about I mean I know that they're going up up against two Yonkos. And, uh... But still, I mean... Sinking all of the ships really is a bit too much, I think. Because some of them will survive. But I guess they will and they'll find a way to, to return back to, main lane, to mainland one or so. That's really okay. Uh, but before that, I, I forgot about this now. Usopp did something. That is good. So he put some guards to sleep. Honestly, I was expecting more opposition when they arrived at uh, Onigashima. They found more opposition on the Tori Gate than the actual island itself. But that's okay. <laughs> that's fine by me. So, yeah. We then see them going through a portal of Kinemon's making. This was really, really interesting because this puts some questions about the Fuku Fuku no Mi because so far we were led to believe that the Fuku Fuku no Mi needed an object on top of the, of the target's head. Either a leaf or a stone were the ones shown now. So them just going through a gate and immediately getting changed I'm willing to over... I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's just it's just a thing for not comedic purposes, but just for, for Pete's sake. I mean, it doesn't change all that much in the story, so it's okay, I guess. It's just a little bit contra contradictory to the mechanics of the fruit that we've been led to, to believe. But also... If Oda can just come out and say, oh, yeah, this is the thing he could do all along, then I don't care. Maybe the leaf or stone, maybe the object was for more precise uh, clothing different differentiation. Here they are all adapting the same style, so I can imagine that, you know, since they're all in the same style of clothing, they don't need the object to differentiate them. Even though we have women, we have some differences between the guys, like some of them have the crossed leather thing on the chest, some others don't. But yeah, it's, it's okay. They're all under disguise now, so we'll see how helpful this will be, actually. This is the most important thing. It's, will it be helpful? And I really think it will be. Now, we cut to the mansion itself, where we see the funky, the funky queen just calling out to the members of the Beast Pirates and the other guests. We see a little, I don't know if these are marionettes, if we can call them marionettes. I really hope I'm not offending anyone. I know they have a specific name, I just don't know it. Of an oriental dragon and... Of an Eastern Dragon and the uh, and the uh, Yamato no Orochi symbolizing Kaido and Orochi, we see Scratch Manapu just digging it on the disc on the DJ stand. It's it's really amazing how out of all things there's a DJ stand in Onigashima. Like probably it was brought by him, but but yeah. And there we go, King Queen singing his funky song. And starting calling them the waiters, those awaiting smile fruits, the pleasures, those who lost the bet and laugh, the gifters, those who are blessed with powers and out of those blessed, 
the strongest and the chosen ones out of the gifters, the headliners. Not that the headliners are all that much, especially if we consider, you know, headliners like, like, um, like Sheep Sheet, Kinrumi, Oldham, Dobbin, Babanuki, like Daifugu, meh. Like these guys are all meh. And this chapter makes it believe that the difference between the Flying Six and the Headliners is like abysmal. Like really abysmal. So we'll see. He, he calls out to, to the Flying Six, but they of course don't respond because they are too cool for that. He calls them jokesters and, ah, you know, just ignore those arrogant punks. He calls out for the for the for the numbers. I was gonna call them monsters. They are monsters, but he calls out to the numbers, and they all respond. Not all of them. Three of them respond with a unique laugh, and this is the first the first time we we see one of them laughing. We have three laughs: and Achacha and Gokiki and the Kunyu Kunyu Nyu Kunyu. That's really interesting because it's. One of the two possibilities of fruits that were left for the strides. If you remember, there's that, there's that numbers that all the fruits in the strides crew have uh, numbers in it. So Gomu is five six, Hana is eight seven. So they all have a an even number, and I don't know the names in in English. I know them in Portuguese, of course, but I know them. Don't know them in English. So the only two numbers that were left were, I believe, two and nine. So that would either be new Q, new, uh, new Q. Oh no, wait, is new Q not, not Q new? But it's it's really similar. Now that I was thinking about it, it is very similar. Let me see, like, uh, Kuma. I not Kumai. I want Kuma. I want Bartholomew Kuma. Ah, here we go. So... Ah, yes, the Niku. It's not Nuku, it's Niku. Ah! So there goes my parallelism. <laughs> because I read this as... Oh, yeah, it's Niku. Okay, never mind, forget this whole segment and let's move forward. He calls out the Mimawari Mim, these names. The Mimawari Gumi and the Oniwabanshu. So we get confirmation that they are both there. I thought that one of the groups would stay behind in main in mainland Wano, but apparently no, they are both at Onigashima. So yeah. After that we get the official introduction to the remaining <coughs> members of the Flying Six. And this is where I would like to spend a bit more time. I don't know how long this second recording has gone to. Because I lost 30 minutes. <laughs> anyway, I just need some water, so if you please. Because at this point I've been talking non-stop for like an hour or something, so you'll forgive me for doing this. So yeah, first we start with an interaction between the ones we'll find out that are Ulti, Page One and Who's Who. Ulti is just complaining that Queen is calling them arrogant punks and she's talking in a very posh way. She goes like, the nerve of that beastly man, the nerve. Uh, there's an expression in Japanese that symbolizes this. I've seen it in Asa's Twitter, in the library of O'Hara Twitter, but I forgot about it and I'm not gonna check it now. And page one goes like, oh, you, you picked up a new talking, a new weird talking trend. So it's so embarrassed. And she like banters to him, oh pay pay. At first the, the the first fan translations translated this part as grandfather. Like she was referring to page one as her grandfather. But no, it's pay pay from page. Like it's a, dim a diminution of the name to I don't know, make it sound cute. 
it's not cute. Who's who proposes, this is a really weird name to, to, to say, but yeah. He asks, if Queen were to die, like, let's say tonight, who'd be the next lead performer? Who'd ascend to, to All-Star? Then we have Black Maria, the one we'll know is Black Maria, asking him, I assume it's him, if he thinks it's going to be himself. So, at first I was a little bit confused with this because then the S Drake says I have no interest. So at first I thought, wait, is Black Maria asking the S Drake or who's who? But now I realize that she's asking who's who. So the S Drake drops out because of course he has no interest. Then, uh, then Sasaki goes like, Oh yeah, if you if you're dropping out as a candidate, that'd be great. Implying that were the S Drake an actual member of the Beast Pirates, were were he was he actually a pirate, he would be one of the top contenders for an all star position. This is big. Or at least within them, like I think we can already say that Sasaki, the S Drake and Who's Who are the top three. Out of, out of the six, they are the top three. So, I'm sorry, unless all the others... Page one is... <laughs> I mean, if I was thinking this the other night, like... When we saw page one appear, appearing, he was like this big-ass Stegas, uh, Spinosaurus... Like, destroying everything, kicking Sanji, having a fight. We don't know how the fight ended, by the way. We know that he's here. And he's, he's in top shape. I mean, he's not exactly injured or anything, apparently. So, I assume that Sanji managed to run away from him. So... Um, but yeah... Sasaki just goes like, and you know, Pepe can't, can't even contend here, so he'll you'll be dropping out, right? Like, we we can already see the power structure between them, sort of. So, as many people have theorized, who's who seems to be in a sort of, or he sees himself in a sort of a higher position. Uh, then I would say that the Azdrake and Sasaki are below, but just because the Azdrake doesn't want to show everything. Sasaki is a mystery, then Ulti and Black Maria are just there, and then there's page one. Like if we compare page one to to the to the other headliners, Sheep Sheed, um, or Sheep's Head, I don't know, Sheep Sheed, Ginrumi, Holden, Speed, Dob, and all those that appeared, Page One has no problem against them. He just... I believe he'll just kick, them, kick their asses. But then, when compared to the internal power, power hierarchy of the Flying Six, that is a different story. So yeah, then we get this final double spread, double page spread that Viz ruined once again. But um, yeah, we see all of them with just a name tag and that's that. We see Ulti, Page One, Who's Who, Black Maria, Diaz Drake and Sasaki. Now, as many people have theorized before, all except Diaz Drake have their names based on a card game. So Page One is based out of Page One, the, the game Page One. I didn't knew... I don't know the rules of this, I will look them up after, but I just haven't done so. Ulti is... is a, Expected to be named after an Hungarian card game of the same name. Who's who? Who's never played who's who? Like, this game is huge. Like, this game is huge. Like, I know that this is not the... 
the 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 one the, the card game the original card game is not the one we immediately associate with but come on we can't look at his name and not immediately think of the of the play version like with the different people and whatnot it's it's impossible so then black maria named after british card game of the same name and sasaki it's possibly named after the card game 44a which again all these card games that i never heard of this this is older like he goes out and finds these super niche names and just presents them as character names okay but just before we move on just before we finish because i really would like to finish this soon I'm sorry, I just had to take another sip. But yeah. <clears throat> An interesting thing is that, apart from the Azraic, all of them have horns, some way or another. Who's Who and Page Ones seem to be, and also Sazaki, I guess, seem to be part of what they wear. Sazaki wears this super cool looking hat, Who's who wears a mask that covers his eye and his nose. And page one just uses... It looks like a fisherman's hat with horns. We know he doesn't have horns, because when he appeared in his dinosaur form, he didn't have horns. Unless you consider that unibrow-looking thing to be his horns, but... If we see the, um, well, yeah, the hybrid form has those as well. Well, I mean, there's precedent. There is precedent, so I don't know. But I, I would want to believe that the horns are not part of them. Black Maria and Ulti, on the other hand, I think that they could be natural. And the others just use them as part of iconography. I don't know, maybe that's just a headband with, with horns sticking out. But, man, the, I was really super surprised when I saw the, the Flying Six in full. Because, first things first, two of them are women. We, only, we were expecting only one to be a woman. And that turned out to be Ulti. But then, the one we saw the least of was the one on the back, right behind Drake and page one, that turned out to be Black Maria. Now, Black Maria seems to be either a giant or an abnormally um, huge human. It's possible. There's precedent for that. So... Yeah, we don't know if she's a giant or just an abnormally large human. I, for one, would be okay if she was just an abnormally large human. Because I think that for giants, that's reserved for the numbers. The numbers are the giants. For me, Black Maria can just be half a giant for all I care. Who's Who appears to be... I don't know if we can say that he's a member of the Long Black Tribe. Like, he really looks like, if we go and compare him to Blue Gilly, for instance, like, he seems to be, seems to be either very tall, because let's face it, Katakuri is also very tall and Katakuri is not half long leg, as far as we know. So, he's just extremely tall. So... So who's who can just be, I mean, just an, another abnormally large human like Katakuri. So, yeah. Sazaki, on the other hand, just does really seem like a fishman. And I want to believe that he is a fishman. We don't see gills or anything, but I really want to think that he is a fishman. 
Another interesting point is that we thought that the sword was of Sasaki's, but no, the sword is who's who's. So, and that was really interesting because, I mean, just by looking for the feet, I mean, Sasaki just had the appearance of a samurai. No, would have, no one would ever believe if we tell them a week ago that the one who turned out to be who's who was a swordsman. But yeah, this... Oh, I just really, really enjoyed seeing them like this. I've been expecting... I'm a sucker for, for groups in One Piece. So... I mean... Some of my favorite characters are just straight up groups. Like the Supernovas, the CP9, now the Toby Ropo, at least aesthetically. I really enjoyed every single one of them. Like, they could just be sort of randoms again. Like, you compare them with the, with the other headliners. I, I'm doing this because they are headliners. They're just the strongest of the headliners. You compare them to the headliners, and although the other headliners are all distinct, ex the gifters is not so much, but the headliners, you can see a sort of the distinction. Like, you look at Dobbin and you look at Baba Nuki. By the way, Baba Nuki in the anime, his elephant will be yellow. The episode hasn't released this week because of, of the corona, but on the, the preview, his elephant is yellow. Like, how weird is that? It's Wano, I tell you. And then you look at Solitaire, Daifugu, they're all interesting looking. That's not what I'm saying, but... The Tobi Ropu really are one step above, for me, at least. And I'm really looking forward to see who they're paired up against. Now that I actually know their appearances, I can, I can count them in on my fights. Uh, video that's going to be released sometime in the near future. Speaking of near future, this is it for this chapter. I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoy all One Piece chapters. <laughs> I've enjoyed the last few so far, so there hasn't been one ever since we left the flashback. Oda's just been on a roll, man. He hasn't stopped. The guy hasn't stopped. It's been chapter after chapter after chapter of good things happening. So, next week there won't be a chapter, not because of the corona, but because of the golden week. So, the next chapter will hit, as the Viz so kindly informs us, on the 10th. Now, next week and this week there will be no more videos. So this week and next week there won't be Kingdom Come Deliverance videos because it's the end of the semester at university and I really need to to focus up on that. So I will take into consideration that there's no One Piece next week and next week and for the remainder of this week there will be no more videos. We'll be going on a small hiatus and we will return on the 11th with One Piece chapter 979 and we'll go from there. If the breaks keep on going because of the coronavirus, I have other things to, to fill those gaps. I have a ton of ideas and as soon as university ends for this, for this year, for this school year anyway, uh, I will get on them. I'll go back to Kingdom Come Deliverance as well because... I don't know how you guys are, are enjoying the, the series. If we go by views alone, I would say not that, not that much. But uh, alas, I'm enjoying it very much. And I'm enjoying the game very, 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 very much. So yeah, I will see you guys next week. Not next week. This is the, for this is the force of habit. <laughs> I will see you guys May 11th for the next chapter of One Piece. Until then, if you're also at school, university, or whatever kind of educational activity you get up to, 
best of luck to you. I don't know if your school year is about to end as mine is, but I wish all the best luck to you, especially on this quarantine scenario where the classes are not exactly the same. But hey, it's like nothing happened for some people for some people. So and I hope we are staying safe during the quarantine. Please stay safe. I hope to see you guys next time. So I'll see you then. Bye bye.